There's a mic right there in the middle, so if you can make orderly fashion, walk up to the mic. No rope, pleasures, or anything, please. We, are, we have our first questioner. Yes, sir. Is a mic work? Huh? Uh, Melissa, you said you were uh, interviewing Joe recently, and not to go into any of the controversy. Speak a little closer. Not to do any of the controversy that's involved, but did she mention any work on the Scottish book? <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> she, but she is, she's writing again right now, but it's, it's not Harry Potter, it's right. something else. And she says it, she doesn't say, yeah, I'm writing, she goes, yeah, I'm writing again. Like, with this smile, you know, this huge smile on her face. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of more excited for that, even though the Scottish book, oh, God, I can't wait. And I, I love that you're calling it the Scottish book, because that means you listen to Potter Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Um, the, the Scottish book, for those who don't know, is her, is her upcoming encyclopedia about the Potter and yeah, she is just full. If you ask her a question about anything, and I'm talking about what weather, what's the weather outside, within 30 seconds, she's talking about the canon, about, about Potter, and it, it's amazing. So she has so much more to tell. So yeah, there's, there'll be a lot in there. Thank you. Uh, my question is your response to the YouTube videos of Twilight fans versus Harry Potter fans. <laughs> What fans? Like, like verses? Like how the Twilight fans are downing the Harry Potter books on the YouTube videos. Yeah, I saw that. I, I mean, just I wanted think to that's hear a, your guys' response. I think it's an unnecessary competition because there's so much carryover from our natural, you know, there's a natural carryover from our fandom to theirs. I think that, that they're creating an unnecessary fight. There's no fight there, man. I mean, it's just ridiculous. We, lo we love those books. All of us read those books. I have no problem with them, you know? I mean, and Rob, my fellow Hufflepuff brother, is Edward, you know? And, and Cedric, Cedric lives. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, he's dead! I just think it's silly. Cedric, Cedric was bitten, and so now... <laughs> My resolution is to finish the new Temeraire book before I start Twilight, so I have a good excuse. But, but seriously, back in 2000, 2001, there was a lot of discussion on fan, not fan sites themselves, but media sites that covered fanish things, about the battle between Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. There was no there there, and there's no there here either. It's just, like Sue said, a ridiculous concept. But for those of us who've been in the Potter fandom a long time, been there, done that, definitely got the t-shirt, and they all say Gap of Rohan on it in the usual blue Gap font. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathleen, and I'm from Australia. Um, so, uh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. yeah, we don't say that. Oh. <laughs> We go around saying ironically, but apart from that, not unless you're in the country. Point taken. <laughs> um, I just like to say I love all your websites. It's so awesome to be so far away, so disconnected, but then be able to get the information and stuff like that. So it's really great to be here and to meet you guys. Um, my question was uh, to do with um, your leaky mug pass tonight. I want well, that's right. I wanted you guys to thank you. Um, announce it, say where it is, because um, I'm not sure if I can get there, but I don't. I have not had access to the internet for a month. So. Well, uh, some of some of you know we we at podcast Sue and I are on podcast do a, a joint podcast sometimes with Mugglecast, which is um, called the Leaky Mug. Yeah. And since Andrew um, and Matt and Mugglecast live in the area, they're coming up, and we're going to do at 7 p.m. at the Borders in Mission Valley, which is like 10 minutes from here. Um, a Leaky Mug, the first one we've had in about a year, so please come down. It'll be fun. <laughs> I'm sorry for hogging the microphone, but I actually do also have a question. Um, do you think the seventh film being split into two movies, and you may have already addressed this, but I haven't read it, is going to be beneficial 
oh, is it going to be like a bad thing? At first, I was like, two movies! No, but book seven is packed. It's packed with so many, you know, mini adventures. And so I think that by splitting into two films, we're going to be able to see it all, you know, and they're not going to skip things and they're going to give everything in book seven, hopefully, you know, what it's due. So I'm, I'm glad that it's in two movies now. I just had a quick question. Is not a quick question. I just wanted to check. Is my uh, clipboard still out there somewhere? Very nice. Okay, we're passing that around so everyone can put their information down. Next question. Um, I just, as regards the two movies situation, I agree with Aaron across the board, and I have to say, I wanted two movies for every book. Yeah. Thompson. I wrote a book called Frodo Franchise, which is sort of parallel to your book. It sounds like it's the history of the, the Lord of the Rings film phenomenon. And I had access to the filmmakers. I, I'm curious about how fans do get access. Mm -hmm. It's terrific that you got it. And um, do you, did you have to sign a confidentiality agreement? And are you required to show them the manuscript you want? No, I had to sign no confidentiality agreement. Nobody even asked to see the manuscript. They had full trust, which was such a blast. I mean, I kind of expected that moment to come for them to say, well, we'd like to see your manuscript and for me to be like, ah, you know, and have that, that author tense moment. But no, they were so unbelievably trusting. As for how you get access, um, this, this is actually addressed in the book because in the early days, we really had none. It was really hard to kind of break the wall because not only did we have none, we have none, fans in general didn't have any. And so I was writing letters and emails because I came from, um, I was just out of college, where we did a lot of coverage of entertainment media, and I thought, well, we're, we're just like any other reporting service, they must see this. And so I kept writing emails, and finally I got somebody on the phone who passed me and passed me and passed me and passed me. And all of a sudden, we had a person there who then sent us to the junkets, who then sent us to the sets, and Leaky was the first site to report from all of that, you know, because of, because of that. And it, it builds up, it really builds up from there, and the only thing that maintains it is a continuing uh, commitment to re remaining respectful to the series and to the brand, and not, not, which doesn't mean you're not critical. There's, I mean, we've, we've talked some, some smack on the movies on the podcast, I mean, when we're upset with things, for sure. But it does mean that you don't do things that are outrageous, like, like sell, we sell their movies on burn DVDs. You know what I'm saying, you know? And if you have real respect for the thing, for the, for the franchise and can prove that over time, it does, it does happen. They're really good, so, thank you. Um, New Light is threatening to send me a confidentiality agreement, but they just never did, so right. I'm Anyway. That's great. Yeah, congratulations on the book. Thank you. Thank you very much.